This lesson deals with more basic Laplace transform properties and transform pairs. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in Chapter 9, starting on page 9. Our next property is called the differentiation property. And let me just state it. The Laplace transform of the derivative of f of t is equal to s times f of s minus f of 0 minus. So we're taking the Laplace transform of f, multiplying it by s, and then subtracting the initial condition. Now, why would that be true? Let's apply our definition of the Laplace transform. So the integral from 0 minus to infinity of our function, which is df of t dt, and then multiply that by e to the minus st dt. In the last lesson on page 8, we looked at using integration by parts, which says that the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. It takes a little practice at picking u and dv, but let's try the following. Let me let u equal e to the minus st. And let me let dv equal to the derivative of f of t dt times dt. So in other words, this term and this term taken together. Differentiate u with respect to t. I'm going to get minus s, e to the minus st, cross multiply by dt, then I have du is equal to minus s, e to the minus st dt. And then here, the dt's cancel. I have that v is equal to f of t. So then my integration by parts, again, stated on page 8, is that my integral will be equal to uv minus the integral of v du, evaluated from the upper limit minus the lower limit. So let's apply that. So the value of u is e to the minus st, v is equal to f of t, and then next I'm going to subtract the integral from 0 minus to infinity of v, which is f of t, times du, which is equal to minus s, e to the minus st dt. Bring out the minus sign here, get a plus sign. Bring out the s, it's not a function of time. And so let's evaluate our results. Evaluating this at infinity, e to the minus infinity is equal to 0, and then minus e of 0, which is equal to 1, and then f evaluated at 0 minus. So just minus that initial condition. And then next, we have s times the integral of 0 minus to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Well, that's our definition of the Laplace transform of f of t. So we're just multiplying it by s. So we get the result of the property. And just in words, that the time domain differentiation of a waveform f of t is accomplished in the s domain by multiplying the transform f of s by s and subtracting its initial condition at 0 minus. Our next property is taking the nth derivative of f of t with respect to t and taking the Laplace transform of that. I want to show that's equal to s to the n f of s minus s to the n minus 1 of f of 0 minus minus s to the n minus 2 times the first derivative of f evaluated at 0 minus and eventually just 1 times the nth minus 1 derivative of f evaluated at 0 minus. And why would that be true? Let's let g of t be the derivative of f of t with respect to t. Then the first derivative of g of t would be the second derivative of f of t. Now from our last property, the Laplace transform of g of t would be s times f of s minus f evaluated at 0 minus. Now let's take the Laplace transform of the first derivative of g of t. Well, that's just going to be equal to s times g of s minus g of 0 minus from our last property. But g of s is equal to this, so I'll put that over here. What is g of t? That's just the first derivative of f of t, and then we're going to evaluate that at 0 minus. So multiplying this out, then I get s squared times f of s, and then I get s times f of 0 minus, and then I get minus the first derivative at 0 minus. Let's do the same process again. Let's let h of t be the derivative of g of t with respect to t, and so the Laplace transform of the derivative of h of t dt would just be s times h of s minus h of 0 minus. Now what is h of s? Well, that's the Laplace of the derivative, and that's just equal to this expression right here. So I'm going to multiply that by s, and then what is h? h is the first derivative of g, but g is the first derivative of f, back over here. So then we replace this by the derivative of this evaluated at 0 minus, which would be the second derivative of f of t evaluated at 0 minus. Let's multiply this out. I get s cubed times f of s, s squared times f of 0 minus, and then lastly, s times the first derivative of f evaluated at 0 minus, and then, of course, this last term here with a second derivative. You can now see that pattern to that equation that we started with just the general symbol n for the highest power of s. And this is the proof of the nth derivative property. Let's do an example. Let's show that the Laplace transform of the cosine of beta t u of t is equal to s over s squared plus beta squared. Now, we've shown before that the Laplace transform of the sine of beta t u of t was equal to beta over s squared plus beta squared. The sine and cosine have a derivative relationship. So the derivative of sine of beta t is equal to the cosine of beta t times the derivative of what's inside here, which is equal to beta. So I'm going to divide that over here. So I can use my derivative property to find this result. So the Laplace transform of the cosine of beta t u of t will be the Laplace transform of 1 over beta, the derivative 
with respect to t of the sine of beta t times e of t. Pull out the one over beta out here as a scalar, and then we've taken the Laplace transform of the derivative before and shown that it was equal to this. It's beta over s squared plus beta squared. We're going to multiply that by s with our derivative property, and then subtract the value of this sine function at zero minus. But the sine of zero is equal to zero, so this just cancels. The betas cancel, and we just get s over s squared plus beta squared. And we get the formula here. We're going to build up a table so we can take the Laplace transform of a time domain function, get the s domain function, and then use that same table to go backwards. Our next property in the s domain is, is that if the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to f of s, then if you multiply f of t by e to the minus alpha t, and then the Laplace transform of that is equal to f of s replaced by s plus alpha. Okay, why would that be true? Take our function again, multiply e to the minus alpha t times f of t, and take our definition of the Laplace transform. So we're going to take this and multiply it by e to the minus st dt, integrated from 0 minus to infinity. But I've got two exponentials here. Put them together as one and just add their exponents. That's going to give me a minus the quantity s plus alpha. And so this is our definition of f of s, where s is replaced by s plus alpha. Our last property is called the time domain translation property. Let me just state it. If the Laplace transform of f of t is f of s, and have a constant a, which is greater than zero, then the Laplace transform of f of t minus a times u of t minus a is equal to e to the minus a s times f of s. In other words, multiplying f of s by e to the minus a s is equivalent to shifting f of t in the time domain by an amount of a if a is a positive number. Now, why would that be true? So let's take our definition of the Laplace transform. So we'll take our function and multiply it by e to the minus st dt and integrate from zero minus to infinity. I can think of this integral as the integral from zero minus to a plus the integral from a to infinity. u of t minus a is zero for t less than a. So we just have the rest of the integral then from a to infinity of our function, where u of t minus a is just equal to one. Now to do this integration, let me do a change of variable. Let me let tau equal t minus a. So the derivative of tau with respect to t is just equal to one minus zero. Let's cross multiply here, then dt is equal to d tau. Let's look at our limits. We've got t equal to a and a t equal to infinity. Going back to my definition over here, when t is equal to a, I get tau equal to zero, and when t is equal to infinity, I get tau equal to infinity. Okay, so let's go back to our integral. Let's do the substitution. So my original integral from a to infinity of f of t minus a e to the minus st dt, I'm going to do a change of variable where dt is equal to d tau, and then f of t minus a would be f of tau. My lower limit would be from zero, and my upper limit would be to infinity and then replace t here by tau plus a. I could write this as a product of two exponentials, e to the minus s tau, and then e to the minus a times s. But a and s are not functions of tau, so you can pull them out as a constant in front. And this is our definition of f of s, where t's been replaced by tau. And so then we have e to the minus a s times f of s. And that's our proof for the time domain translation property. And these are some more properties of the Laplace transform and transform pairs.